Well, greetings everybody. Welcome to our King's channel and this is an update for the upcoming feasts. And I did put it on a notepad here so it'll be a little easier to ensure that I don't mess up. So here we got September 2021 that's coming up. This is the seventh new moon in the Feastly Circuit. I explained that in the other feast update, the first one. So if you're not familiar with our Father's calendar and how things are calculated for the feast, please refer to that video and it'll fill you in on everything okay so we've got here the new moon it shows is going to be at 8 52 p.m on the 6th of september which means it's actually going to be after sunset on the 6th that the new moon is going to take place and so therefore the first day as it even shows here and i explained in the prior video on the feast update that it doesn't always fall out like this, so this way it's easier to do the counting. So the 6th is sunset until the 7th is sunset is the Feast of Trumpets. It is the new moon. In case any of y'all haven't got your trumpet yet, your shofar to blast on the new moon, I highly encourage you to do so, so that we could all be in unity and who knows, it may send off through the universe your location to the Holy Malachim when our king sends them out there to gather his elect and to gather the children of the earth together, which we just covered in the 144 Gathered video series that I'm still working on. Anyway, from the 6th of sunset to the 7th of sunset is the Feast of Trumpets. Here on the 10th day, from the 15th at sunset to the 16th at sunset, let me check I got that right, yep I do. From the 15th at sunset to the 16th at sunset is the day of it one month, the day you don't smoke cigarettes or anything else, no puffing cigars, don't be putting any lotions or ointments on your face, your hands or anything of that sort. It's a Sabbath. You don't need to go out or go anywhere. You afflict yourselves. Don't put nothing in your mouth. No water. If you can, I'm not telling you not to take uh, medications or anything, but I was on medications at one time and I said, you know, if my life is in your hands, I'm going to forget about it one day. And if you take me at that time, I'm more than satisfied to go. So. You're the one that has to judge yourself in these matters. Our Father said that if you don't afflict yourself, if you don't totally deny yourself for one day out of 365 days a year, 364, everything you need is provided for you. You don't see the uh, occurrences that are taking place behind the scenes. We don't fight flesh and blood, you know, but it's the spirits, those spiritual powers, the principalities of the air and such that we fight even in our daily life, because they're being used as well as Holy Malachim to guide us in whatever walk we have to walk. And I do believe that you should be guided into keeping these feasts. And the Day of Atonement, from the 15th of sundown to the 16th of sundown in September, it's the 10th day. Afflict your souls, or our Father said He will remove you. And if you work on that day, He said He's going to destroy you. So let's not go getting destroyed, okay? So anyway, that's the 10th. Now here on the 14th day, at sunset here, begins the 15th day of the 7th month, which is also the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. And you'll have a full moon during the feast. We brought that out in scripture where it talked about blowing the trumpet, blowing the shofar at the new moon and at the full moon at the feasts. And you'll see here at 7.54 p.m. on the 20th, uh, the air quality is 52, it shows here from particulate matter 2.5. 52 is not too awful great. It's moderate. My eyes have been burning and I've been waking up in the mornings as well feeling pretty much like I had spent the night in a smoke-filled room, you know, from a wood stove. And I know the feeling because I've lived many years in a house that was heated with wood stove. And a lot of times the smoke would blow right back down the chimney and fill the whole place up. So when you woke up in the morning, it was the same feeling in the lungs as I've been feeling for a while here, which makes me see a whole lot more clearly why our king is going to have to shorten the days. It seems like we're going to be choking to death here before too long. 
And if he didn't shorten his days, you know, no flesh would be saved. But here you can see that today the sun is going to set here at 7.49 p.m. That's today. Tomorrow's going to be 2 minutes and 46 seconds shorter. The next day will be about the same and the day after. So we're talking a couple weeks from now anyway. When the 20th comes around at sunset, it will be at 7.54 p.m. where the sun sets. And as you've just seen here in Rome already, the sun is setting at 7.49. Tomorrow it's going to be like 7.47. And I'm not talking an airplane, you know, though hopefully the day will just fly right by like one. So anyway, here on the 20th at sunset, according to Yahweh's calendar, will begin this 15th day, as it shows here, it will begin the 15th day and it will have a full moon on it. And that will be the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles, which is also a Sabbath. The new moon is a Sabbath, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement is a Sabbath. The first day of the Feast of Trumpets is a Sabbath as well. Do no regular work on it. Of course, you can cook, but you shouldn't make no big projects out of it. But if it fell on a regular seventh day Sabbath, then you would not be able to cook on that day. So that's the first day of the feast. This is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and at sundown on the 27th will be the end of the seven-day feast. However, our Heavenly Father begged the children to stay one more day, as it shows you in Leviticus chapter 23 and explained in the prior video, that it becomes the last great day. It's an eighth day of the feast, and it begins at the 27th of sundown, is also a Sabbath day, and it runs until sunset on the 28th of September. Please, I hope you all have written these things down. If not, maybe you can read that. I don't know if you can or not. But hopefully I'll bring it out another time at least before that time comes because I know that we all need reminding in certain things. So I'll just leave that post-it right there. Now I do want to bring out a couple things here that I don't want you feeling as though I'm going to be a male chauvinist pig or anything of that sort when I tell you when the gathering does take place it the lifestyle is going to be you know 180 degrees different than what it is here on the outside men are not going to be working alongside women and women are not going to be working alongside men unless of course you're a family working on a family project or something but Ladies are going to cover up their bodies. They're not going to be showing their bootoxes. If they do, then, you know, the punishment will most likely be that those britches will come down around their ankles and their bootoxes will be whipped black and blue until they learn to put on clothes, okay? Because these sorts of things are not going to take place. There's not going to be any bacon in the place of gathering. There's not going to be anything that defiles. And right now it looks as though our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son, our Father's right arm is His right hand that's been dipped in the lightning is cleansing the earth right now, certain areas. I know that He's preparing it for us. He's burning things out and that's how you cleanse things. You either burn it or you wash it with water. And if it can withstand both, well, by all means, use both means. And our king is burning so many things. It's not a secret. It talked about these things. And it talks about when the 144,000 are sealed. After that point, men are going to be scorched by the sun. And please don't worry about it. You know, when Yahweh Shema comes, it's not going to block out the clouds, okay? As you can see right here, the sun here is in the clouds and you can go ahead and just punch in sun in the clouds up here in your youtube browser bar hit the search button and you'll see plenty of places where it shows the sun is actually in the clouds it's nowhere near as far away from the earth as men would like you to think and with Yahweh Shema, it's a wonder I didn't get a question about that, you know, but I already knew the answer. I was baiting y'all, actually, see if you would notice. But 
being 1,500 miles in each direction squared. 1,500 miles is pretty large, you know, so if it came down in the clouds and the sun was a billion miles away or hundreds of millions of miles, however far they say that the sun is, well, certainly, you know, if Yahweh Shema was sitting on the clouds, it would certainly put a big old shadow, wouldn't it? 1,500 miles where the sun wouldn't penetrate, but no, the sun is going to do its circuit with Yahweh Shema sitting in the clouds and the sun will be right under it most likely in its circuit and people's hearts will start to fail them when they see the the when they see the sheer size of that place and I actually seen the sun behind the clouds in the clouds as well on several occasions the first time I almost wrecked my van when I seen it and nobody had told me anything about this. This was many years ago. I was riding with my children, and I looked, and I saw the sun in the clouds, and I slammed on the brakes. I, I went into shock. It was like a instant reality. And then the next few days, my children were with me, and we were driving down the road doing the same thing. And wouldn't you know, we saw the sun behind the clouds as well. We seen the moon in the clouds. <laughs> And so we don't have to worry about Yahweh Shema being used as a weapon to deprive the earth of the sun. No, the sun is actually going to be scorching hot. And who knows, maybe it's from the reflection off the bottom of Yahweh Shema. It could be. But again, you know, all the things, if you read the scriptures and you see where Ruth, you know, was out in the field gathering grain and such, Boaz had her working in the field with the young ladies so that the young men wouldn't touch her. I'll tell you, when I was living in Canastota, New York, back in the early 90s, there was a pork-eating friend of mine, you know. I, I didn't eat pork at the time, and I let everybody know it too, you know, which caused a lot of people to abandon me because I was rather stupid for doing so. I should have just held on to it and let them ask instead of me offering, casting my pearls before the swine. And the dogs, too, you know. Looking at all them cute girls that have no discretion. You know, Solomon said that a beautiful woman with no discretion is like a pearl of gold in the snout of a swine. <laughs> you know, that's, that's what a beautiful woman with no discretion is like. And if they start wearing... Revealing clothes regardless the chores, they're going to know why they shouldn't. They should not be enticing our brothers and the repentant sisters that at one time were part of the LGB, M and L O P and all that great stuff. But you got to realize as well, Scripture says that the doors of the prisons will be opened. Seeking truth, you got to understand here that where it's speaking in Isaiah 49, it's the servant, the light to the Gentiles. Well, the servant is the body of Messiah. It's the 144,000. It is the children of the earth who hear our words, and they give up their old sinful ways, and they start putting on our Father's thoughts, and start putting on His ways, and start walking in His paths by keeping His laws and commandments, the give or take 613 laws which then allows you to keep the Ten Commandments. You can't keep the Ten Commandments if you're breaking any one of the 613 laws that apply to you. Maybe only 200 of the 613 laws apply to you, but if you break one of those that apply to you, then you're not keeping the Ten Commandments. It is impossible. And even living on this defiled earth where we're all, you know, just sinful, Without wanting to be, I got stuff coming in the windows. When I open the door, it burns my eyes here because of the stuff that's in the air. You know, when they cook pork and McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's or any of these restaurants or in someone else, a neighbor's kitchen. You know, when you go into some of these old rental houses and stuff and you touch the walls and they're sticky. Well, that's all the pork fat that got up in the air and started going everywhere. And when it goes out in the air, you breathe it in. To me, it's as bad as, you know, eating pork, but we're all defiled. And these are not things that you can, you know, just get around if you put an air mask on or something. You know, the fumes are still hitting you and sticking to you, making you unclean. And that's why we're going to be gathered to a place 
that we are going to keep pristine by keeping the each and every word of our Heavenly Father, just like He commanded Moshe in the wilderness, and all the children in the wilderness, though they failed, for the most part, they all went to sleep in the wilderness, the parents, only the children went in, and of course, you know, Yahshua had been none, you know, and a couple others, they went into the promised land as well, but for the most part, all the parents, or those of ages to be parents that went into the wilderness, they all died there, and their offspring went off a whoring after the Canaanite deities, after Baal and Lord and God, who is El, they went a whoring after these things. Now, this is what is coming to pass in these last days. And I think that you'll enjoy this when you see that we're going to be protected. It says here, Isaiah 49, 1, but it's not going to be cool. You know, we're going to have a tough time. We're going to have to teach all those that the Holy Malik sends to us how to keep the laws and commandments. And is in the wilderness. They went there to be tested and tried. That's why they're going to come is to test and try us, and we're going to keep it pristine, as perfect as possible. We're going to keep these laws and commandments where we're gathered. After all, we already seen what the sin brings here, haven't we? The whole earth is falling apart. Isaiah 49.1, Listen, O coastlands, to me, and take heed, you peoples from afar. Yahweh has called me from the womb, from the matrix of my mother. He has made mention of my name. Now, this isn't just Isaiah, but this is also King David. This was Father Abraham and Enoch, Moshe, and every righteous man or woman that ever lived. This is speaking of, but it's also speaking of that which is to come. And it shows how our Father actually has watched over, and now through His righteous Son, watched over those who He has made mention of our name, from even before the foundations of the heavens of the earth was laid. This is a marvelous plan that's coming about. The great delusion, I believe, is Christianity and all the other religions out there. That is a great delusion that they have. I don't know what else they could be deluded in. None of them have salvation. I don't know of anyone that's in any religion or of the Christian Canaanites, of whatever demon nation they're of, that has salvation. They all call on Baal, though some of them may have been also known since before the womb, before the foundations of the heavens and earth were laid, but for particular parts or jobs where they're being walk through life to learn to hate what's outside and even that which seeps in the doors, you know, in the windows. We hate these things that defile. There's no peace in it. It was all created because of men's greed and now they're trying to turn it around and pin it on the people. You know, we've got a great city coming that's 1,500 miles, a cube, 1,500 miles in every direction. Our father said, be fruitful and multiply. And so Satan's counterfeit is this planned parenthood and or etc. And then putting the things that you should not, there won't be allowed in the gathering place. There's not going to be anyone with makeup there, okay? You're not going to wear makeup. And it may sound offensive, but you shouldn't be wanting to make yourself attractive for anyone but your own husband. And besides, it's pretty deceptive, if you ask me. I've seen some women out there, when they took off their makeup, they were completely unrecognizable. It would have been much less a shock if they'd have came up and I could have seen their natural beauty as it was. It was like buying an automobile, you know? And you know, I hope you're not judging me on this, you know? But if it's full of Bondo, you know? There isn't any real metal left to it. It's all sheet metal and rivets and Bondo. A woman should want to be attractive for her husband. And that's it. Shouldn't make lust in the hearts of anybody else. You'll be helping your brother by not causing us to lust. And men's not going to be taking their shirts off out there in public either or doing these cat calls or anything else because they're going to act like men and be defending our women. So furthering, from the matrix of my mother, he has made mention of my name and he has made my mouth like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand he has hidden me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver he has hidden me now i'm in yashua's quiver timothy p's in yashua's quiver 
I believe Mercy and Shane and Margaret and Blue Turtle, Melvin McCullough, David Sanchez, and so many more, you know, are in our King's Quiver being hidden. That's why you see nobody comes to visit our King's Channel. We're hidden, okay? <laughs> And those that do come, if they're not called, they can't hear the words I'm speaking because they don't keep the laws and commandments as they were commanded by our king. And they even try to tell me, you know, that they believe the Jesus. And they say, I'm following someone that's really cruel and wicked and all sorts of things because he's making me keep his laws and commandments. Well, you know, the thing is, if Jesus, if the Jesus was the true name, well, I'd still be living exactly as I am because where it says the Jesus in the scriptures, he tells you to keep the commandments if you want everlasting life. He said your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. He never taught a rapture. He never taught unconditional love. But he said, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And yet everyone out there saying they believe the Jesus and they're walking after the Jesus because he's got unconditional love and, and once saved, always saved. But our Messiah never said these things. You won't find a prophet of old that ever said it. Our father Yahweh never said such a thing. It's not in the scriptures, but this is. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel. See, now here, this is Isaiah speaking. But he's speaking of himself, but now he's also speaking of all of Israel. And who Israel is, is those, or are those, who will hear the truth by a preacher who was sent to explain you have to keep those, give or take, 613 laws. They're not grievous. If you say they're grievous, our Father says you're grievous. He can blow you right out his nostril if you're not careful. But the 613 laws are not grievous. They're a blessing. You ever drop something on the floor and some big bully picks it up, says all finders, keepers, losers, weepers, taking your property? Well, the law says that if something was lost, you're to hold on to it till the owner comes for it, especially when the owner's right there when they picked it up. These things won't go on where we're gathered or they'll be dealt with. So anyone that changes their life from the world to desiring to become a son or daughter of Father Yahweh, you become part of Israel. Whether you like it or not, whether you're a Gentile, a Christian Gentile or whatever. <laughs> oh, I'm a Gentile, so I, I can eat pork and I don't have to keep the law because there's a different law. No, there's one law for the homeborn. There's one law for the sojourner. There's one law for the harlot, one law for the murderer. It's all the same law, the same standard. And our father is not a respecter of persons. And he said to me, you are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. He hasn't been glorified yet because he knows the crapola that's going on in the world right now today until these last days when this last work really and truly begins. Until then, the 144,000 have done nothing but been in training, knocking our heads against the wall, wondering when, Yahshua, you know, when will they start hearing the truth and obeying you? And it says, then I said, I have labored in vain. Oh, hell yes, I have. It sure seems. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Since 2013, I've been bringing these videos, you know. Look at how many people. I guess somebody took interest because I put 144,000 in the title of this one. It actually shows 61 views. Let me click it again to see. 80 views. But then you notice they go to part two. It's only got 45 views on part one. <laughs> Why people do that? I just can't figure it out. Anyway, you know, I look at these people just getting on. I've seen... People leaving comments, and a lot of times I'll just click on their channel, click on their name, it brings me to their channel, and I'll look, and, and most of the time they don't even have a video posted. Now there was this one that had this pretty lady, and I've seen this a few times, where there's a, a pretty lady, and they have absolutely nothing on their website, or their channel, and yet they'll have like two or 3,000 subscribers and there's nothing there and they got two or three thousand subscribers and i've got 
hundreds and hundreds of videos I've been putting out there for our king, being led to do so, and there's 305 subscribers. And I believe the first video I put up was on October 12th, 2013. There's well over 500 videos, you know, on our King's channel available. But look at that, 80 views. But as you look down through the others, 29, 36, you know. Oh, there's one with 96 views. Look, it's got 144,000 in the title there, too. And here, you know, the part two. And this, of course, you know, was a really decent video series here, you know, the 144,000 Exposes Antipas. It was a great video. I encourage you all to go take a look at it. But I tell you, you know, when Isaiah is reading these things out, there's no doubt in my mind as far as what he's saying to be true because it's taken place in my life. And if you're becoming a son or daughter of our Heavenly Father, a brother or sister to our King, then you probably noticed some of this taking place too. Isaiah says, Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and in vain. Yet surely my just reward is with the Father in my work with my Father. And now Yahweh says, Who formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him so that Israel is gathered to him. For I shall be glorious in the eyes of the Father, through his righteous Son, of course, and Yahweh, through Yahshua, Yahshua now will be my strength. Indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant, to rise up the tribes of Jacob? And of course, you know, it's not really giving us the credit because we don't deserve any anyway. The Malik is going to go all over the earth to every tribe, to every nation, to every person, people, tongue. Everybody hiding in the rocks, they're going to hear the Malik preaching. And he's going to preach it in the language they can understand. This truth, and then all of Israel, all those that have been rebelling and wearing those silly little, you know, hair dealies there, you know, some of them staple it to their hat. <laughs> For whatever reason, I, I forget what it is, you know, but even Paul told them not to do such a thing, so that nature doesn't have anything like that going on in it. But indeed, he says, is it too small a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore, now please understand this, and restore the preserved ones of Israel. I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Yes, because all the nations are going to eventually flow to the house of Yahweh. Thus says the Father, the Redeemer of Israel, the Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him whom the nations abhor, to the servant of rulers, king shall see and arise. Prince also shall worship, because of Father Yahweh, through Yahshua, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. If he hasn't chosen you, then you can't hear what I'm saying here, okay? You're thinking it's just a bunch of gobbledygook or something. I'm just reading from the scriptures. But if you're of those that have been chosen by your king and you can't choose him, he chooses us. But if you can hear his voice through what I'm showing you here, then you've at least been chosen. Whether our king came to know you yet or not, he knows of you. But for the most part, we're all like blades of grass in the field. Now check this out. This is what is coming up here shortly that we're discussing, you know, in the 144,000 gathered series. It says, thus says Yahweh, our Father, now through Yahshua, who's bringing all these things about, as everything has been given into our king's hands. It says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. Well, when was that acceptable time? It says this last generation will not pass away until all these things are fulfilled concerning the coming of our Messiah. There's still going to be some, a few men left alive when our king does return. They had probably had better lungs than I do. But it says, in an acceptable time, I have heard you. I pray for you people all the time. And I'm hoping you people are praying for me too. 
and in the day of salvation I have helped you. You know, we just got our day of salvation come a little early, and that's where it talks about those who are first will be last, and those who are last will be first. Well, you could be like Doubting Thomas, or you could be like the children of the earth and the 144,000 that do have one thing that is very common. And our king says here, Matthew 13, 13, he says, Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. Huh? Their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. And our king says further, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Just like here in Yachanan, or John 20, verse 28, it says, Thomas responded to him, My Messiah and my King. And Yahshua said, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And that's where you're falling in right now, my friends, into this gathering, is if you actually do believe that you have to do something to a Acquire salvation, that free gift. you got to do something to get the free gift. You've got to qualify. If a grocery store is giving away a free item, you got to go to the grocery store to get it, don't you? Well, the same way for the free gift. you got to do something for it, my friends. Those that have ears, those that have been heard in this acceptable time, those that have been called out, chosen. You can hear what I'm saying and rejoice. It says... In an acceptable time, Isaiah 49, 8. In an acceptable time, I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. From the year 325 A.D. all the way until these days, there's been no salvation on the earth. There's been nobody to teach the truth. It wasn't part of the plan. All those out there doing the evangelical work, thinking they're reaching all nations and tribes and tongues, when it says the Holy Malik is going to do it, they think they could usurp his authority? I don't think so. I will preserve you and give you as a covenant to the people to restore the earth, to cause them to inherit the desolate heritages. Now get this, and this is why men and women are going to be separated other than families. We're going to be working for our king preparing a place so that when he returns, he'll have a place to set his feet because the earth is so defiled that there'd be no place else for him to come to. That's part of the job of the 144,000 and the number that no man can count is to cleanse the land and to keep it that way without sin. Now get this, it says, that you may say to the prisoners, go forth, to those who are in darkness, show yourselves. They shall feed along the roads, and their pastures shall be on all the desolate heights. They shall neither hunger nor thirst, neither heat nor sun shall strike them. For he who has mercy on them will lead them, even by the springs of water he will guide them. I will make each of my mountains a road, and my highway shall be elevated. Surely these shall come from afar. Look! those from the north and west, and these from the land of Sinim. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains. For Yahweh has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. So please read the rest of this. There's other scriptures that speak about the prisons, or the prisoners are going to be released. They're going to have their opportunity to repent to turn their lives around, but we're all going to have to help them. They may be out there chopping trees, working the farmlands and such, our greenhouses, like all the rest of us will be doing. But because we know they've got special problems that they need to overcome, we're not going to allow them to just 
come right in and start mingling thinking that they've got freedom to do what they want. Everyone's going to have to come to understand that there are laws and rules to come into the gathered place. And if you break them, whatever you've done, whatever the judgment is, is going to come on you. It says obedience is much greater, much better than sacrifice, you know? Which means and meant if you don't sin, then you don't have to kill an animal, okay? Think about it. And there's not going to be any of that going on anyway during the last three and a half years. Our king will still be doing sacrifice right up there in Yahweh Shema, that great city that everyone's going to see, and yet there's still going to be a great falling away. Think about it. They're going to see Yahweh Shema right up there. I mean, right up there on the clouds. There's going to be pillars of fire at night and pillars of smoke during the day. Of course, our Father's voice is going to come forth from the 144,000 as we're being led by the Lamb, but He's not going to physically be here. He's, he's physically in me, but it's a spiritual thing, most people would say. But our King is just as real as I am that's living in me. What I'm saying is he, he also sits on our Father's throne. He's in every blade of grass out there in the field. He's in the trees. He's in the squirrels. He's in the deer running across the road. You know, he's everywhere. His spirits are everywhere, making sure everything is coming to where it needs to be. And my friends, if you've looked here recently, I mean, the earthquakes that are taking place, even since I brought out part one, of the gathering series there i mean the earthquakes waverly tennessee did you see the flood through there i mean mountains are melting like wax all these things are taking place earthquakes eight ones eight twos are commonplace it seems here lately three volcanoes going off at the same time in alaska it's snowing in venezuela they just got like two meters of snow it's been snowing in brazil it's been snowing in africa and things are just going to keep getting a little worse. It says it's going to get to the point where some of these hailstones are going to be 100 pounds apiece. They're going to weigh a talent in weight. And a talent is about 100 pounds. Most people wouldn't even be able to pick it up. And it's going to come crashing through people's roofs. But if you keep the commandments and the laws, if you trust in our king and you live by the every living word, and you're getting prepared to come to the feast to blow your horn at the Feast of Trumpets until your lips are, you know. If you're not willing to come before our Heavenly Father through His righteous Son when He calls us out, you shouldn't be listening to these videos anyway. I'll still pray for you, but you shouldn't be listening to these videos because they very well could condemn you if you hear the truth and you shun it or make fun of it or things of this sort. So prove all things. I'm not lying to you. I'm not setting dates. I'm just showing you what Scripture actually says concerning an event that's coming up that's way further away than any rapture or unconditional love that people's going to see when Yahweh Shema comes down and sets on those clouds. I hope you got in your food storage and other things you may be saving up some fresh underwear. You may need them. And with that, I love you all. Pray for one another. Keep the law. Bye.